Hello and welcome to the top five albums of the year. The moment you've all been waiting for. None of you have been waiting for. Some of these videos are single figures, but I care not. And you care not because you know this, this video is the real deal. These are the five best albums of the year, according to my opinion, which nobody values, including myself. Let's just get straight into it. First album at number five. Radiohead, a moon-shaped pool. I spoke at length about this band. Uh, you might have heard of them being one of the biggest bands of all time, being one of the biggest selling bands of all time, being one of the most successful, innovative, incredible artists of all time. And a band that is still producing work that shits on 99.9999999% of the competition. To be this accessible, yet challenging, and do things on your own terms, and to be this successful at the same time is heartening. Will we ever see a band able to play by their own rules and still reap the benefits in terms of record sales, in terms of concert success, in terms of credibility? Who knows? I really do hope so. But, you know, these are one of the last great, great big bands and we should cherish them while they're around. So yeah, there's a video about that where I just pretty much just wank it off for um, about 15 minutes. So I'd fully recommend checking that out. Next, at number four is an artist I haven't actually talked about. Uh, well, I kind of have in a roundabout way uh, this year, but uh, yeah. This is Devin Townsend with Transcendence, and I'm absolutely gutted that uh, I feel bad that I've not put this at number one because there's just so many joyous moments on this album. This, uh, for those of you that haven't really heard the Devin Townsend project, or only had little bits of it, obviously you know Devin Townsend, multi-talented, multi-instrumentalist, amazing producer, genius, sang for Steve Vai, he's been in a band, Strapping Young Lad, one of the greatest extreme bands of all time. He's the casualties of cool with this weird kind of dark, spooky country electronic stuff. And uh, numerous solo albums like Infinity and Ocean Machine that, uh, you know, truly game-changing, nourishing music. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, the Devin Townsend Project is more kind of right down the middle of those influences. This is the most commercially focused project. And, uh, you know, they've had multiple albums uh, since their inception, nearly 10 years ago now. And they've all been to a very, very high standard. And although the first four had like disparate influences all over the place. You know, they all kind of were laid out separately. As his career's gone on, they've all, the sound has kind of merged into one kind of happy middle ground. Without compromise, uh, it, it's more than it's a succinct, focused sound. And this is the most focused, uh, finest realisation of the vision of the Devin Townsend project, which is massive guitars, massive production that sounds like, you know, Def Leppard's Hysteria, but with, you know, modern technology behind it. Huge operatic vocals, shitloads of echo, walls of sound, uh, electronic swaths of just beautiful ambient noise all over the place. This is the happiest metal album uh, I've heard in a long, long time. This is uplifting music that makes you feel better. Uh, songs like Stormbending are absolutely majestic, incredible tributes to just overcoming obstacles. You know, these are inspirational lyrics, but without seeming trite, without seeming cheesy, without all this PMA bullshit, this is about overcoming obstacles in life and within yourself and, well, transcending all the trivial things. Don't sweat the small shit, get over yourself. This is the message on this album, and it's just executed fantastically. Um, Devin's vocals in particular are some of the most commanding, uh, just operatic, monstrous vocals he's ever done. And, uh, you know, he really still is a truly underrated singer. We all know he's an incredible guitar player. We all know he's a superb producer. We all know his songwriting, his creativity knows no bounds. Uh, but let's not forget, he's one of the best singers in, well, in the world. And speaking of one of the best singers in the world, uh, Annika van Giersbergen, of course, does make an appearance on the album. Not as frequently as on previous albums, but she is nonetheless absolutely majestic, as you'd expect. Uh, you know, she is just a force of nature. And um, like I say, although it's much more, you know, about Devin's performance on this album, when she does make an appearance on like, Offer Your Light and, uh, oh, what's the song called? Uh, Transcendence title track, she's great on that. From the Heart, she's great on that. And the little bits in the background on Secret Science, uh, she just adds that extra touch of class 
and um, just takes that to that that next higher plane. So, yeah, Transcendence could easily be number one. Brilliant, brilliant album. Uh, I would just just check it out. Just don't even hesitate. Don't even think about it. So, um, to from uplifting to kind of uh, tragic in the context that now surrounds this album. Uh, this is Architects with All Our Gods Have Abandoned Us. Now, obviously, we know that um, Tom Searle, the guitarist and you know main songwriter from this band, sadly lost his battle with cancer only months after this album was released. And, um, you know, it really kind of puts a whole new spin on how lucky uh, that, that we are to actually even have this album. This album even exists. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to go on that tour. He didn't have to make this album. But this is... Basically, his, his his final statement, and uh, I'm so pleased to to say that it's it's an absolutely phenomenal album that we should be great even exists, and this is just a brilliant British band that doesn't compromise, that just goes for the throat, that sings about things that matter to them, that have actually got a message, and it's so powerful, so brutal, so creative. Uh, so uplifting in places, so full of despair in others. The last track, Memento Mori, is just one of the greatest just compositions that I've ever heard from a metal band. And um, they are truly doing wonderful things. And they're no longer like a quote-unquote metalcore band. They are their own thing. And, you know, they sit high at the table at the top end of these great artists. And um, all our gods have abandoned If you haven't checked this album out, if you just looked at... Uh, if you pitch some of them before, oh, and they're just going to be some trendy metalcore band, I don't like the haircut. Just stop doing yourself for the service and listen to this band. Listen to fucking Nihilist, and it will rip your throat out and piss down your fucking open wound. It is a 10 out of 10 monster of an album. And uh, just architects, man, they're just fucking brilliant. And, you know, they just make me want to fucking punch old ladies in the face because they're so fucking heavy you know even if you don't agree with the messages the, you know the political stuff the environmental stuff the vegan stuff whatever these songs are just absolutely brutal and they make you want to just kung fu kick till your ligaments fall apart so yeah got pretty passionate there but architects all our gods have abandoned us don't abandon this album because it, it fucking rips and like i say pff, there's a hair's breadth between these now so, at number two, another British band. How exciting. And this is just, honestly, the, these top two, ugh, you know, it, it's, it's almost a coin flip. But I've gone for number two, Black Peaks with Statues. So, I reviewed this album on the channel, and I've only grown to love it more and more and more. I've seen them live, like, shitloads of times. I'm looking forward to seeing them live again. Uh, any opportunity, when they're in the general vicinity of where I live, I'm seeing Black Peaks, you know, I've been down right in the front row while, you know, they've been screaming in my face and just tearing the place up. Uh, just really unique sounding, innovative band, and they just encompass everything that I like about just rock music. You know, this, it, just they've got the, uh, the dreaminess, the ambience of death tones, uh, the, uh, the polyrhythm, the subtlety of Tool, the crushing riffs of Mastodon. The frenetic energy of every time I die. They've got that kind of angular British hardcore thing that sometimes reminds me of Hellos for Heroes. They've got the pop hooks of uh, Ruben. Remember Ruben? Jamie Lemon, the singer from Ruben, makes an appearance on this very album. But, you know, they've got it all going on. Maybe there's an even bit of early Biffy Clyro in there as well. Uh, but they, as much as I'm talking about all the different influences, when they're put together, nobody sounds like this band. These four musicians have got it down. They've got just an incredible rhythm section, like a tool worthy rhythm section. Uh, the guitar player is a one man band in itself. When I'm watching them, I can't believe it's just one guy that's making all these noises and the chord choices that he makes and the riffs just fill a room. And they've got one of the best singers I've ever seen live as well. Uh, you know, this guy can this guy can do it. This guy can fucking do it on record. And you can definitely do it live. Songs like Say You Will is the obvious go-to. Those piercing, banshee-like, stratospheric wails just cut through you. Uh, and, you know, he's got that kind of subtle, muse-like falsetto that he throws in there as well. He's got more of a sinister low kind of grumble. And he's got the, uh, the throaty kind of Bronx-like growl as well. They have got it all. But, you know, 
talent aside, their individual brilliance wouldn't mean anything if it wasn't for the fact that all of these songs are masterful compositions. This is their first album, and it is better than established bands. I've got this higher in my list than massive bands that have been doing it for years because you put them together head to head objectively speaking if you've never heard of these bands before if you don't know their history this album is better than most of these things or there's a case at least that can be argued uh, and even if you don't agree you've got to say it's in the same ballpark as some of these you know Deftones it's, it's, it's better than the Deftones album like definitely better than Deftones album it's better than the Metallica album absolutely you know it's uh it's going toe to toe. I put it higher than the Dillinger Escape Plan album, and I fucking love the Dillinger Escape Plan. So, yeah, Black Peaks statues. Check it out. Come on, do yourself a favour. What are you playing at? It's Christmas. Treat yourself. And finally, at number one, I think you know what it's gonna be if you follow the channel. Uh, it's Oceans of Slumber with Winter. Still left a sticker on. Yeah, Oceans of Slumber Winter, so the Texas-based progressive metal band. Uh, and again, like the Black Peaks album, does a lot of different things, pulls a lot of different influences from all over the place, from grindcore to black metal to jazz, soul, blues, to pure prog, just southern rock and everything in between. And uh, what do you get? You get just, honestly, honestly speaking, one of the best records I've ever heard. And I know I've got a, uh, a tendency to exaggerate and go over the top, but no, this this band, Oceans of Slumber, rule. And not enough people have really kind of got behind this. And, you know, this is the this is the first album with the, the current lineup as well. Obviously, they had that debut album, which, which is actually really good. Uh, but, you know, this is actually them fully realising the sound. This is album number one as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, songs like Winter, Devout, the cover of Nights in White Satin. Uh, there's just the soul, the emotion, the ability to go so many different places. The ability to just, like, take you inside your head on a journey, flying above everything and completely take you out of the world and pull you into a different dimension. Uh, it's all on here. Uh, the sequencing is amazing. These beautiful little instrumental moments just... Um, aimlessly seek between the songs and some people have criticized these little instrumental fillers but you know what it gives you a breather and allows you to appreciate each individual song that's laid before you you know suffer the last bridge is pure brilliant commercial rock you can put that on the radio you can put that on radio one or you can put any of your active rock radio stations in america in the middle of the day and people will be like yeah brilliant you know it sounds like a more commercially viable perfect circle cammy gilbert one of the best vocalists just there is, so soulful, so sultry, so seductive, but so mournful at the same time. She can do this commanding swagger. She doesn't have to scream. She doesn't have to bellow. She just owns it. And phew, what can you say? Like, uh, the drummer is an absolute outrage. Dobba Beverly, Jesus Christ, best drum performance of the year, with no doubt. I mean, my mate thinks he's, uh, he's way too showy for the music, but, yeah, you know, less is more, more is more as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, just the different kind of voices, the different influences coming together just to make a uh, just an amazing journey and uh, a classic, classic album. So, yeah, that has been 2016 and what an absolute banger it has been. And, you know, it's revitalised my love of music. I'm not just going to go listen to, like, the same bands I've been listening to all the time or whatever. It's encouraged me to check new things out. And the fact that, you know, there's debut records left, right and centre in this list. And there's more that I could have had in there. And there's shit that I've actually fucking left out that I thought, oh, no, that should have been in there. Spoiled for choice. So, you know, let's hope that 2017 is, uh, is in the same ballpark. Uh, in the meantime, listen to more music. Don't just... I can think it was better in, in the old days. Don't just go back to the same bands again and again and again. You know, take a risk. Check something out. And I think it will really improve the way you think about things. Rock isn't dead. It's more alive than it's ever been. you just got to look for it a bit harder. So, yeah. I will see you in 2017 for some more bullshit. Uh, have a lovely Christmas. Yeah. Enjoy time with the family. Or not. Or, you know, sit alone crying in your desolate room. It's up to you. Anyway, see you later. And uh, up the foxes.